Welcome back. Um, I am going to be moving. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is another call for prayer because <laughs> it's overwhelming. I'm staying in the same city, but moving into um, a temporary place with my friend who... And then we're both going to be looking for new places. But anyway, the whole process of moving is overwhelming and my place is a wreck. And the thing that gets me most is all the paintings that I have. Because I um, mentioned that my mother was an artist and I'm an artist. Anyway, I have so many of her paintings. And I have a second room that's just full of paintings like her paintings and my paintings and it's just very difficult to figure out how to correctly move those and I have to store them anyway stress <laughs> so just pray for me um yeah what else did I want to say yeah so yeah my my as I've mentioned before my mom died two years ago and I haven't painted since so and then before my mom died my cat Chloe died and then my beloved kitty Joey died both were so beloved um, and then thankfully Henny and Guster like I've mentioned before I'm cat sitting this summer so there I love them like they're my own kitties so the good news is I'm actually moving in temporarily with their um their, their mom, <laughs> their human mom, um, until we both find what we're looking for in, in the city. Uh, and then I'll have my own place and she'll have her own place. But anyway, so the time is extended with, with Guster and Henny. And, but anyway, that, all that to say grief. Grief is so difficult. And I wanted to mention when my, when Joey and Chloe died, and of course my mom, when she died that I'm still grieving, but about the kitties, um, these books really help me, even though, frankly, I haven't read them. I've just kind of opened them, but um, I'll show you. This is, you know, some of the titles are kind of childlike, but this is Will I See Fido in Heaven, scripturally revealing God's wonderful eternal plan for his non-human creatures. Um, I just ordered a bunch of these. I'll share with you. This is, there's Eternal Life for Animals, a book based on Bible scripture. And Cold, cold Noses at the Pearly Gates. Um, a Book of Hope for Those Who Have Lost a Pet. Animals, immortal beings, scriptural evidence of the immortality of animals. And there's one more here. Um, the immortality of animals and the relation of man as guardian. I have, like I said, I really haven't read any of the books. But I have opened to certain pages when I've been particularly sad and... They've been a comfort. Of course, I'm not affiliated with any of these authors or anything, so I'm not promoting for the sake of promoting, but if any of that would be helpful to you. Uh, the other thing... Oh, I wanted to show you, too, because we've been reading through Exodus, um, just some illustrations of, of uh, the tabernacle furnishings in this book, First Century Study Bible. So that's kind of what some of the uh, furnishings would look like. And I guess I can read that. It says, the symbolism of God's redemptive covenant was preserved in the tabernacle, making each element an object lesson for the worshiper. Likely reconstructions of the furnishings are based on the detailed descriptions and precise measurements recorded in Exodus 25 through 40. And it says the bronze basin is not shown here, but 
here's an idea. Okay, well, let's get to reading. Okay. We'll start Exodus 38. They built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, three cubits high. It was square, five cubits long, and five cubits wide. They made a horn at each of the four corners so that the horns of, and the altar were of one piece. And they overlaid the altar with bronze. They made all its utensils of bronze, its pots, shovels, sprinkling, sprinkling bowls, meat forks, and fire pans. They made a grating for the altar, a bronze network to be under its ledge halfway up the altar. They cast bronze rings to hold the poles for the four corners of the bronze grating. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. They inserted the poles into the rings so they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying it. They made it hollow out of boards. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Let's stop there at verse 8, and we're going to go on to John chapter 2. Okay, John, okay, John chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, what, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. Okay, let's stop there. I love this because um, I can just kind of imagine the scene, you know, his mom is like, <laughs> Mary is, um, you know, concerned. She's like, they don't know wine. I don't have any more wine. And Jesus is like, woman, what do I have to do with, with this? What, you know, it sounds like he's a little frustrated. And he's, he's like, my time has not yet come. Then his mom is, do whatever he tells you. I don't know. She just sounds like right here in this passage. She just sounds kind of like a Jewish mother. And he sounds like uh, a little exasperated, <laughs> but yet he, he honors her and he, um, of course, turns the water into wine. Anyway, I, I love this because, you know, I had a Jewish mother and, um, it just sounds, I hate to say it, but I don't mean to be irreverent when it comes to the scriptures, but she does sound like a Jewish mother there, which is a wonderful thing. And then he, you know, 
he gets a little frustrated. It sounds like to me, you know, his humanity. But, um, I, oops, sorry. I like that because he had a Jewish mom, just like I had a Jewish mom. And his father, of course, you know, his heavenly father was... <laughs> I don't know, we're talking about the incarnation and great mysteries. I probably shouldn't, um, I don't know, it's a great mystery. But at least his mother was Jewish, and those of us who've had Jewish mothers, how we love them. And um, then you can also, you know, go a little crazy with <laughs> But I would, I would take it all back. I would, I would take all the, uh, I would endure all the uh, frustration just to have my mom back again. She did drive me crazy, and I know she's up there in heaven, maybe listening, who knows, but she knows she did drive me crazy, but she knows how much I loved her too. Uh, maybe sometime I'll share some of her paintings with you. You may have I guess I could share one. I have one on my wall. It, this place is a complete wreck because I'm moving and it's all in disarray. But let's see, I'm gonna, I'll take you to uh, one of her paintings. I think it's kind of a self-portrait. It, it might be disturbing to some, but I really love it. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, here's... It's a really large painting, but I love all the colors, the greens and the blues. And she just was very expressionistic in her art and um, just wonderful. Here, I'll show you another one. Okay. Well, yeah, let me show you. Just very colorful. Let's see if I can show you more. Um, hold on, sorry. <laughs> My primitive cinematography. Here's another little, this one's intense. Apparently that was my father, a portrait of my father. <laughs> All right, let's um, go back to the kitties and let's maybe close in prayer. But yeah, I have all her paintings, and then my paintings. My paintings, you can see in my crazy paintings, you know, how I was influenced by my mother, but uh, we're, we're a little different. But I learned a lot from her. Anyway, let's close in prayer. All right, Lord, um, help me with this move. Help me with respect to the paintings, too. It's kind of overwhelming. Lord, I pray for all those who may be grieving such powerful and painful losses. Lord, you are well acquainted with grief. And you feel what we feel. And you're not removed from, from our pains and our sorrows. We ask for your Holy Spirit to comfort us. And to. I pray that you comfort all who are listening, who have experienced loss, and me. And um, help us to live and help us to love you and others and... Give us your joy, because your joy is our strength. Thank you for the blessings of all of your beautiful creation. Everything that you've made as an artist, us, <laughs> you created us, and all, all the wonderful creatures that you've made, the earth and kitties, of course. And um, just bless us. 
pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. Goodbye.